Interesting. Then they um they have their military police AI, which would be an interesting thing. That is interesting how they're gonna roll that out here in Dubai. We're working together to, to work on these hard problems. So I'm just going to tell you about three brief glimpses of what we're working on to try and chart the future of AI, this path to broad AI, to extend, to understand, and accelerate AI technologies. So first, in explainability, one of the interesting features of AI, back when I was in the 90s learning about computer science, uh, people said that software would eat the world. And I think to a first approximation, that's come true. Now people are starting to say that AI is going to eat software. And I think that's also true. Increasingly we're relying on AI to do workloads and to do processes that would normally be the domain of conventional software. Now a problem with that is in the 90s we had debuggers, uh, tools that let us fix software when it wasn't working the way we intended. But for AI we don't yet have a notion of a good debugger. So this is a project between Antonio Tarabola at MIT and Hendrik Strobel at IBM. And we're working on thinking about what does the debugger, AI debugger of the future looks like. So here's a case where an AI system has made a mistake. It's a captioning system. It should have said brushing teeth, because this is a picture of a girl brushing her teeth. But instead, the system said washing dishes. Now, in a conventional AI workload, it's not clear what you do next. Do you have to throw away the model? Do you need to train it with different data? Uh, we don't have the tools to really ask what to do next. So what this team has done is they're building the tools that let us interrogate the neural network, neuron by neuron figure out both which, at neuron by neuron level, which parts of the image gave rise to that activity. That neuron. Lots of things going on. I'm going to get off my phone so I can listen to the rest of it. I want to give you a sense of how much is happening here in Dubai. You can come listen to the rest of this if you want. It's not the right answer, but you can see why it might have thought that based on what it was looking at. The next neuron said house, the next neuron said bathroom, the next neuron said person. And you can see in totality what was missing is the network who was confused because none of the neurons detected the toothbrush. And now we actually have an actionable path forward to fix that problem if it's mission critical for our application. We can enrich the data set with more toothbrushes. We might look at the resolution of the network to make sure that it can see the toothbrush. But we begin to have tools that let us get closer. And this is, that was an example in image recognition. Here's an example in translation that our team has built. Uh, translating from German to English. In this case, the system has made a mistake. And what you can see is a tool now uh, where the, a user can interrogate, uh, ask questions like, what would have happened if the neural network had done this instead of that? And it gives you very sophisticated, fine-grained tools to figure out why the neural network failed and how you might fix it. So we think this is a very important piece. We're also working on ways to extend to small data. So one problem with today's AI is that it's fundamentally correlational in nature. It can detect correlations, but it doesn't get the underlying causal structure. And this is problematic for a number of reasons. So here I have a